Hello everyone and welcome to Beam Saber the Cenotaph part 28. I am your host Austin Ramsey. I am also the GM for this show and the creator of Beam Saber. You can find the rules for Beam Saber at austin-ramsey.itch.io slash beam saber. My pronouns are he him and as always this stream is presented by You Don't Meet in an Inn an actual play podcast about exploring obscure tabletop role-playing games with a diverse rotating cast. If you want, you can find me and you don't need an in on Twitter at not an in. And joining us this evening is Sasha. Hi, I'm Sasha. My pronouns are NNs. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Sasha underscore Renault. You can find all my game dead stuff at T Cabbage. Thank you. Also with us is Takuma. Hi, um, I'm Takuma. My pronouns are they and she. Uh, my Twitter is at Takuma underscore Kata underscore, and I have games at nerdhome.itch.io. Thank you. Also joining us is Jess. Hey guys, I'm Jess. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter and Twitch at um, QuasiNim. Q U A S I. Wait, yes, N Y M. <laughs> I can't smell. Thank you. And last but never least, Ray. Hi, I'm Ray. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ray Ray the Gay Gay. And you can find my games at rayinthefog.itch.io. Awesome. All right. So, last we left our heroes, y'all were taking a bit of a breather just camping out inside the Twindler and Red headquarters. You know, jousting. Excuse me, I party hard. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fair, yeah. Uh, Scarecrow did get very drunk. Um, you also sort of have a bit of a truce with the Shade Spear Squad and Harlan Smythe, uh, which has been okay it seems there's been no open conflict and you have one level remaining of the HQ to explore before you have satisfied the uh, requirements of the March of Saints of making the entire headquarters safe for them to uh, fully take over <clears throat> also, as a reminder, you have three objectives from the Breath of Faith, which is to gather actionable intel on the saint's intentions by answering the three questions. What does the Sovereignty Engine do? Where is the Sovereignty Engine located? And how is the Sovereignty Engine controlled? You have answered one of those questions, which is what does the Sovereignty Engine do? And the answer to that is it can use, uh, manipulate the electromagnetic uh, fundamental force to move objects around in space and at great distances. You also have a data cache, which you acquired in a previous session, which you haven't opened up yet because there was a whole lot of shit going down once you grabbed that. <laughs> yes, yes, there was. Uh, so that'll have the answer to one of the other two questions, which I will let you all decide which one you want to answer with it. And Dredge, you have that data cache. So what does this look like as you examine it? Um, hmm. Well, I think that is... Uh trying to find um, a way to talk to it because I don't have any interface but I do have the thing where I can talk to uh, apps or, a or AI as if it were a normal human um, so that's what I'm trying to do okay well you're not going to have to make any rolls to get the information inside of it that was you, you already succeeded on that roll to get it so I'm not going to uh, screw you out of your success you already got your consequence previously. Uh, but as for interacting with it, 
I think that it is a very simple uh, piece of infotech. It actually doesn't have any apps or proxies embedded in it. It's just like a data program. It, it's a... Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's enough data to be a full uh, QD, which is a um, quantum drive, uh, uh, essentially an external hard drive about the size of a brick. Mm. But I don't, it's not that much information. Okay. Um, then this is like probably plugging it into um, the Magpie and looking at the readouts there. Okay. All right. So, which of those two questions do you want the answer to at this time? Or is it located, or how is it controlled? Um, I feel like how it's controlled is probably the more relevant one. Where it's located is a little bit more malleable of a fact and might be subject to change. That's a good point. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. Let's let's find out how it's controlled. Okay. So. Zip that wind roll. Yeah. You open up the files and you find out through reading, I can't recall what the source of this data was. So I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna do a very good job of flavoring it to your investigations, unfortunately. But what you are able to piece together through reading these technical documents and the conversations about them is that the sovereignty engine is controlled, can be controlled in one of two uh, operations rooms. And it takes like a couple of people to really take full advantage of it because there's necessary targeting data and recon involved in the whole process. And one of these operations rooms is in the lowest level of the Twindler and Red headquarters. And the other one is located inside of the Sovereignty Engine itself. Ooh. Neat. Um, and sorry, if I wasn't recording that. Um, do we want to stick that in the chat? Like, I wasn't writing that down. <laughs> um, Sorry. Here, I got this. Hold up. Thank you. And if you have any questions related to that topic, I will answer them so long as I feel they are, remain within the purview of this this data cache. Okay. Um, how, much, how much training does it require to operate? Um... You get the sense that it's involved, but that there's a lot of transferable skills with it. If someone is like, it sounds like if a group was trained to operate the bridge of like a, a major uh, starship or naval ship, or the one of the mobile fortresses of the Jovengelians, then they would probably be able to figure out how to operate the Sovereignty Engine without too much trouble. It's Can I ask questions here? Sorry. Please. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what exactly is the mechanism by which it's operated? Like, is it, is it a computer program? Is it mechanical? Uh, yes, it's a computer program. There's, uh, it sounds like the control rooms are like a, somewhere between a half dozen and a dozen uh, computer interface terminals. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, I have a question. Um, is there a priority access order or anything like for example does operating it from within the engine itself override external commands or reverse 
Yes, operating it from within the engine itself will indeed uh, override the controls from the Twin Laren Red headquarters. Um, but it also sounds like they can't really lock one out. It's more of like if one if this one at the engine is in use, then the one here won't function, but it's not like the one at the engine can block the usage here unless it's just like you just leave it on. So as long as you never let go of the throttle basically, you have control. Yeah. Okay. Um, Metatextual meta question. Are you a fan of the 88 Appleseed OVA? Uh, I've only seen one Appleseed OVA, and I don't recall which one it is. It was, was it hand-drawn or was it 3D? 3D. Okay, never mind then. Might be the same storyline. <laughs> I'll just, i show you later. Any other questions about your Sovereignty Engine Intel? Was it ever tested or used? Hmm. I think that that comes from your previous bit of Intel. Um, and there was some preliminary tests done with it, but like very light testing. They never really tried to get it to flex. So, so they know it works, at least like on a smaller scale, and theoretically it could work on a much larger scale. I think these the, the small tests was stuff of like um, bringing uh, a moving shuttlecraft. But the the theory says that it could be used to move like full sized like space battleships. Huh. Hmm. And it also hmm. appears to be able to go as small as like debris the size of like a thumbnail. Do we Damn. trust these records? Like does it seem like these are accurate? Theor like the records themselves appear to be accurate the a lot of the testing data about how well it works is theoretical like when i say they did small scale testing on it using like seeing if they could move shuttlecraft that's what they did theoretically it can move you know thumbnail sized debris but they never actually tested it to that level of precision there's no like obvious obscuring of any information. No. Okay. In fact, I'm just going to say that there is none. Like, if if any of you, presumably Dredge being the technical expert, were to do a deep dive on the quality of this information, it is all legit. It hasn't been obfuscated, other than the fact that uh, it's been compartmentalized. Hence why you have only answered two of the three questions so far. Okay. I feel like there's other stuff, but I don't, I can't think of anything. I mean, we also do have these records if we need to look back into them. Um, I guess the other question then I think would be like, Okay, here's a here's another question because this obviously has its own control room. Like, what is what are the dimensions of the engine? I think might be an apt question, since um, the location is the only kind of like non-specification information. I'm going to say that that falls outside the purview of this, uh, the information you have so far. Okay. Based upon what you do have, though, you can tell that it is at least large enough for a control room plus whatever uh, technology is required to enact its purpose. So it's not like a box somewhere. <laughs> Presumably. Unless it's like a briefcase attached to a room. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, or it's got the face with a room inside it. Potentially. I don't know. Great, we're JoJo now. <laughs> I, I don't mind this stone. Just I just wanted to clarify like what exactly we were looking for. Mm -hmm. Is there um a particular scarcity of uh the materials it's made out of? Again, I think that falls outside of the purview of the information you have. I think that's what materials is it made out of? Again, I don't I don't think okay. that that's here. I think more like the physical object, the sovereignty engine itself, that'll be with the where's it located Intel. Okay. How expensive was this thing to make? What was the budget on this? I am tempted to tell you, but also because that could give you an idea of like material value. I'm going to withhold that information until you find out the intel related to its uh, construction. All right. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have no further questions, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so long as no one has any other badgering of witnesses to do, Takuma, <laughs> then I think we shall move on. So, what are the four of you going to do? You've gotten this information. I think in the last, like day or so uh harlan and the shadespear squad have disappeared they didn't they didn't say any goodbyes or anything of the sort you just realized one day hey claire hasn't been like spying on us harlan hasn't stepped in at any point to try and weed weasel something out of us and no uh we haven't seen any uh hell faceless goons marching about slinking about rather ah uh, scarecrow is now immediately on edge you know the thing where you, you see a, a giant spider in your room and then you look away and then it's gone it's not reassuring <laughs> <laughs> no not, not particularly it's not really an out of sight out of mind kind of situation here mm-hmm so thanks for that, Austin. You're welcome. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> well, we should head down a level, probably. We should probably finish the mission. Yeah, I, I mean... That's probably the hardest course of action. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do we want to, <sighs> like, take, like... And not ten minutes, but metaphorically ten minutes. To like just like make sure there's nothing hazardous, try and complete that extra March of Saint March of Saints thing. I mean, we have we have control of the, all four levels. I and we okay, that's the... that's fair. I just didn't know if there was like anything specific we should keep an eye on. Maybe get into the source of those weird zombie things. Well, I don't know. It's uh, not a huge deal either way. I'm just. You, wondering if that's something we want to handle or not. You have mechanically secured this level by okay. by filling clocks. So, like, if someone wants to have gone looking for the source of that stuff during downtime, I'm free to, like, tell you a bit about it if you want. But no one's going to get deep information on it because no one used their downtime to investigate this stuff. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I just... Mm -hmm. I wanted to mention because I had been thinking about it. Did I use my second downtime? <laughs> Everyone used all their downtime. Okay. We spent a lot of money. I remember I struggled to figure out my second downtime. Uh, well, so. There we go. Okay. So the four of you are in your avis once again? Uh, I. I yeah. 
I mean, the they're all repaired by now, right? So. Well, <laughs> repaired whatever repairs you did on them. I'm not sure what damage they might still have lingering, if any, or any. They're functional. Yeah, or any quirks they might have currently spent. But no one's uh, obvies are absent, if that's okay. what you mean. Yeah. All right. So you reach the massive elevator going down to the next level. And much like the one leading to this level, there is an airlock doorway before you get to the elevator itself. When the doors open, no uh, silver-eyed and silver-nailed R&D personnel come streaming forth this time. And so you are able to just get on the massive 45-degree elevator that carries your obvies downward. Normally, this elevator would be used for transporting whatever supplies or materials are required on the level below. But you've got your war machines on it. It's a freight elevator. Yeah. An absolutely massive one. <laughs> and it reaches the bottom after a couple of minutes of slowly moving between levels. There is another massive door. This one is not heavily armored like the previous levels. There's even a small doorway off to the side for uh, people not in your vehicles. The door opens up and you all move inside. And it is also an airlock style space. The door behind you closes and a spray begins hosing down your machines. And you can see on the walls as lights flash that this is just a decontamination protocol. As you've reached the fifth level and on the fifth level, uh, where are my notes? The fifth level is the support systems level. The doors, pardon? That's reassuring. <laughs> the doors in front of you open up and there appears to be a small sort of uh, loading bay type area here. Unfortunately, unless you decide you want to start going through walls, the magpie and the mantis are going to be the only avis able to move forward. And both of those are going to require rolls to move on because it looks like this level is for people and forklifts only. So I guess technically Scarecrow and Pitchfork could steal some forklifts and use those. Forklifts. Yeah, use those instead of Avi's because the rules are flexible enough for that. I feel right at home with the forklift. I have yep. no objections. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I also want to... Okay, no, I'm, I've, I've already got... How um, fast are forklifts? Not fast. They can be pretty fast. Well, In like... A line. Yeah, I mean, like 15 miles an hour tops. So, fast adjacent. Yeah. It depends on the kind of forklift. There's a couple of different kinds. Yeah. So th these are definitely not like construction style forklifts. These are with like the big sort of cherry picker style arms. These are just, you're sitting behind the forks. The kind that would have, that would be like fueled by propane with a tank on the back that you'd find in a, a 
like a, a Walmart loading dock. Okay, yeah, I know which ones you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, Pitchfork, are you indeed going to be taking one of these? Yeah, I mean, if Bert's not going to fit. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say you can't find the keys, but there's definitely going to need to be a fortune roll to see how long it takes you to get access to one of these, whether it's like hot wiring one or searching the nearby uh, uh, workers room for, for a set of keys that match up with one of the vehicles. Mm, I wonder. Okay. I might go for hot wiring. Like, I feel like that's something I've had to do before. Probably. That's that's something I've, I'm like, okay, it's been a while, but I, I think I remember how to do this. Um, so, yeah. Just one. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't remember very well, do I? No, that's a two. So you eventually get it that it comes to life but it takes you a couple of tries and i think you probably zap yourself on the controls at least once nothing nothing enough that it'll cause you harm or stress but there is a delay to what is happening and so i am going to bring up a clock um, that was previously hidden, and add one tick to it. It already had two ticks on it. What? No, thank you. Yeah. Don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Takuma just has to like lean her head up just like <laughs> yeah so there's three out of four ticks of this question mark clock completed alright so while Pitchfork is struggling to hotwire this forklift what are the three of you up to? Um, I'm gonna squirm hmm. on in there. You're gonna try and squeeze the magpie in? I'm just gonna wiggle right, right in there, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so what do you want to roll for this? Because as I said, this is going to require a roll. We've established that while the mantis and the magpie can try and get into these small spaces, it is not easy. Um, I mean, that's a maneuver, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, can I do the same? Absolutely. You have to be based in that. I just, I like using my back for things, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, so this will be, this will be controlled standard. Okay. Controlled limited. <laughs> your mech oh, has, yeah. your mech has some damage? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> that mismatched what? arm is just... That's a, that's a five. A little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, some good please. That's also a five. Okay, so, uh, what would the consequence of this be? Um, so these are going to respectively be, it takes time, so I'm going to add another tick to this question mark clock, and that's for you, Tower, and then the other one is going to be that y'all will be at a risky position instead. Okay. Do you want to accept these consequences? 
Sure. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Risk hard, play hard. Yeah. So that is filled, that four tick clock. Just, just, just come at me. <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> find out what the clock was, or do we have to wait? Um, you know what? I think I will uh, tell you it now. Um, yeah, there we go. Mm. Sh mm. Wow, I finished already. Thanks for that. Yeah, it's Great. the Shade Spear work clock. Because while y'all were doing downtime, they were doing work. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So what I don't trust it. <laughs> well the uh well the magpie is squeezing in to the this hallway, you squeeze forward and you stop yourself just short because the hallways here, as I said, are people size. They are not opening up on the other side of these doors. They are designed for people to be moving through them. And what you see shortly after squeezing through, and you just managed to catch yourself at the last minute from tripping it, is a claymore Eesh. set up. <sighs> okay. Lovely. Yeah, so that's why y'all are in a risky position. This place. A claymore? Ah, so, Ray, I'm not sure if you know. You might be thinking of the big two handed sword. Yeah, no, that's what I am thinking yes. of. Yes. Am I missing some beam saber lore here? Not no, it's beam saber lore, but there is funny. a type of booby trap that is sort of like crescent shaped, and you line it up with the, the outer rim of the crescent shape facing towards the enemy and when activated it, an explosive charge goes off behind it and it fires shrapnel outwards in a cone okay so it's not just like a sword hanging from the ceiling kind of deal which is what i was picturing <laughs> <laughs> turns out the shade spear are really big into like you know classical imagery there's they just leave damocles swords everywhere yeah <laughs> yep yeah, no, I, I was picturing a sword hanging from the ceiling, not gonna lie. No, this this thing is at about, like, ankle height, po pointed sort of upward to, like, a, a lower abdomen height. <laughs> I'm sorry. That did go off. <laughs> so, yeah, it, uh, it did not go off. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna let everyone know. Hey, there are mines this direction. You have a make and model. Uh, I can look at them and tell you. Hey, hey, Austin, what are the <laughs> make and model? <laughs> um, I don't have a specific like designation for this particular variety of booby trap but i will say that conveying it to scarecrow scarecrow you definitely can tell that this is a variety that is a jovengelian and b favored actually you know what it probably isn't jovengelian it is probably um from uh, exodus republic inc but you know that it is favored by shade spear squads excellent um further question are they optical or trip uh this one was trip there is okay. a there is a thin almost invisible cord running across this hallway okay um okay um and the, okay cool so that's probably standard for the model and shouldn't assume but that they don't have anything else but um okay so i, I think what she's gonna say then is um Okay, Dredge, I think we're gonna wanna keep uh I think we're gonna keep the magpie outside. That thing fills the whole corridor. Yeah. Alright. Um just um ping the location, I'll I should be able to disarm this one. 
Sure. And I'm also just going to note, generally speaking, I think we have to disarm them all because that's part of making this place safe, is not leaving mines everywhere. <laughs> generally speaking. Yeah. Does anyone have a good survey? Mm, no. Mm, no. <laughs> I have one. And stress to burn, so I could. I forgot I had Roadmaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm putting up an eight tick clock for this level to make it safe. All right. <laughs> Yep. Um, so, Scarecrow, you're going to try and disarm this, this mine? Yep. All right. What do you want to roll for this? Hmm. Okay, I have a question. Mm-hmm. These, um... These claymores... Are the... What what grade of explosives are they? Specifically, would they count... If one were to detonate, would it count as doing structural damage? Oh, no. These ones, they won't cause structural damage. They're just going to, like, leave shrapnel embedded in the opposite wall. Their explosion is not actually that large. Hmm. Okay. I guess I'm just going to shoot it. Okay. That is the safest way I'm going to shoot it from as far a distance as I can get an angle on it. I assume it once the magpie is out of the tunnel? Well, yeah, I don't. I can't access it while the magpie is in the tunnel. Okay. Yeah. So I would like to roll hunt for that, if that's okay. Uh, yeah. Sure thing. Uh, this will be risky standard. That's a four. That's a four. All right. I'll add two ticks to the support systems clock. And to be clear, I'm, these sorts of booby traps aren't going to, like, I'm not going to, we're not doing a D&D ass dungeon crawl here, right? Well, that's been well established. I'm not going to be having y'all make uh, uh, search checks every couple of feet to see if you kill yourselves by stepping on the wrong thing. Why, thank you. They'll just be lingering in the background as potential consequences. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And... Speaking of consequences, yeah! <laughs> it appears that the Shadespear squad brought some drones of their own. The sound of your gunfire mm. has activated them. And so, is. Hugin, a Jovengelian Shadespear make, or would they have something uh, else? Hmm. I think the Hugin is her own equipment. I think uh, Shadespears might have an equivalent, but this it seems to me with Hugin being with her as long as I kind of presume like, as long as I kind of formulate that he has, that he would have been something picked up along the way or customized. Mm-hmm. So oh. he might be of a similar model or make, but he's not sta He's not standard issue, I think is probably the best way to describe it. He's not stock. Okay. Yeah, so in the loading bay that y'all are in, you can hear the whir as... A small group of drones activate, and I'm just going to reuse the rotor drone clock that we had previously as three drones rise up from behind some crates that are down here. And droners rise up. 
as opposed to the ones you encountered earlier, these ones have actual weapons. And they open fire with what are essentially submachine guns. What do you all do? Oh, you've got that, that forklift running now, Pitchfork. <laughs> Which I, sh I should start a clock for that. Because temporary vehicles, they they don't have uh, they don't have quirks or Something damage. Not going to last very long. Yeah, mundane vehicles are only a four tick clock. <laughs> you can resist uh, consequences with them by spending those ticks as per usual. Um, or you can push, actually, or you can uh, push by spending ticks, uh, two ticks as well. I, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, since we took a downtime, does that reset load or does that carry over? Uh, that carries over, y'all. Right. This is not a new mission. Okay, cool. Thanks. Oh, okay. I'm wondering... Hmm. No, I don't know that that would work. Okay, um, I have a question then. Mm-hmm. Um, armor be considered refreshed, or is that just expended? Uh... I believe... Hmm. I will have to check that. Uh... Because if we haven't been able to change out pilot gear, then... Maintenance? I don't know. Yes. Because uh, also, I, I just had to undo it a couple of times because I assumed pilot load was pilot load. Once an armor is spent, it can't be used again until the beginning of the next mission. Cool. Yeah. Right. Radical. Okay, yep. Um... Oh, okay, so I was, wasn't was sure about this, so I wanted to double check, but pilots can push temporary vehicles by adding two ticks to their destruction clock and resist consequences by adding three ticks. It's just a flat three. It's not modified by your vehicle actions. Oh, no. <laughs> Oof. So... I mean, there's more than one forklift <laughs> if this one dies immediately. Yeah. All right. So, what do you all do about these drones with submachine guns? Because we gotta shoot I... them. <laughs> I like shooting things. So, Although I did just take the last action, so if you guys want to put me later in the stack, I understand. Of all of us who are prepared to fight a flying drone with a submachine gun, I, it, this might be you, buddy. Yeah, okay. yeah this right, might cool. be your moment. Um, don't I do assume I have distance to something. hunt since they are just rising out and attacking from a distance for once. Yeah. All right. Cool. In that case, I would like to hunt. And um, what's my position and effect? This will be uh, because of your fine... Sniper rifle, I'm assuming you're using. This will be mm -hmm. risky great. Risky great? Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. It's two to push, right? Two stress, correct. Okay, I'm gonna push, and because uh, I have sharpshooter. I'm also going to rapid fire to suppress them. Ah, okay. And I will take the extra die. <laughs> Roll those five dice. Crit, baby! <laughs> <laughs> Is it. Hmm. I it's rolled. Not showing up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not showing up for me. Jess is okay, lying. <laughs> No, no, I will print screen this shit. No, 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 no. <laughs> no there it goes. Okay, oh, that's two sixes. <laughs> oh, that's 
tasty. Okay. All right, so I will add the five ticks that you get from critting on a grate. So you you fire you fire the one round, and it takes one of these drones out, and you start to fi you you fire another, aiming to suppress them, and instead you destroy a second and clip the third. <laughs> That's how it be. And they they just hit the ground and ex explode in a shower of pieces. Pitchfork, what are you up to? I, I said that if uh, Scarecrow didn't act, I would do something foolish. There's still time. There still is time. Um, Ramming speed? I'm not going to ram something in the air with a... <laughs> <laughs> you just got to find the right ramp. <laughs> I did consider Ramping. I did consider finding a ramp, but uh, <laughs> I do have this nice uh, extendable claw thingy. Um... I want to, like, lacrosse throw a grenade at the left. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> fantastic. I love it. <laughs> you know, you know you can just have a grenade launcher, right? Because you're the soldier. My anti-armor weapon is, like, sort of already an explosive launcher, but, uh, eh. <laughs> Okay. All right, what do you want to roll for this? Um. Uh, struggle? I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, struggle works. Sure. Uh, this. What kind of grenade are you throwing at it? A frag grenade. I, I figured, but I thought I should double check. Yeah, you, you know. I, I am tired. I don't think the sprained ankle is going to come into the throwing part, but the tired part does probably. Yeah. Also, I think this is the first frag grenade pitchfork has used on screen. I, I think I used one when we were in the uh, basement when we were rescuing the rubble runs. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, did you collapse like a staircase? Or I somewhere? thought that was just... Ah, okay. All right, then. That might have been me. This I, I could have given the you the grenade. I don't know. I, there, <laughs> there was a frag grenade involved previously, but yeah, maybe just the ones. Things have been confused. Yeah. So, this will be uh, Risky Limited. You're tired. It's, it's, it's hard to throw a lacrosse throw a grenade. Also, you know, if you're across the, the launcher is uh, is a fine melee weapon, though. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're not using it for its intended purpose. You did not decide that your fine melee weapon was a lacrosse stick. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh no. That's oh, a three. Oh Jesus. Oh, three. with a grenade. Oh. Ooh. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no, no. Yeah, what happens with this grenade? Um. Why does anyone use guns? <coughs> Sorry. Hmm. Yeah, so this, this drone that the last one, which is suppressed thanks to Scarecrow. It's trying to open fire on y'all, but it can't get a good shot. And so its shots are just sort of like filling the air above your heads. Unfortunately, one of them collides with the grenade soaring through the air. And this grenade is on a timer. It's not an impact grenade. And so it bounces back towards y'all and explodes. Mm, can I resist that? Well, here's the thing about resisting someone else's consequence, right? Is that you have to take the harm first, which sounds like Tower's diving on the grenade. Yeah, no, I think that's what I, I think that's what they're doing. Yeah, so I guess it it like oh. lands at Pitchfork's feet, and uh, or I think I think it's almost like they try to kick it away and realize that's not gonna do enough, and then just like. 
jump on it. Oh. Well, <laughs> you keep, I mean. Are you still in your mech at this point, or? No, I, I, I think I, I think I mentioned I was getting out of my mech to uh, go through the hallways because I realized the space wasn't going to be good enough. But I am resisting it. I'm not going to take this harm. Uh, um, not this early in the session, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you're like kicking it away. I think I'm like trying to kick it away at least and. <laughs> okay, that sounds like prowess to me. Okay, that's two dice. That's not the end of the world. Two dice, don't fuck me. You fucked me. He didn't really fuck me. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's a three. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a completely clean stress bar, so. Because I, cause I just got a scar last session, so. Or the session before. So it's not. Thank you, baby Jeebus. Yeah, so take... Uh, and I also think that was, you know... Yay, reckless! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> so take that three stress. This grenade yeah. comes... Goes soaring one way through the air. There's a sharp ping that comes over the sound of gunfire from the drone and Scarecrow's booming rifle. As... And the grenade begins returning back towards Pitchfork. It hits the ground in front of her, and Tower Thinking Fast kicks it away moments before it explodes. And it just absolutely demolishes a nearby crate. Okay. No structural damage? No structural damage. No, you resisted the consequence. That crate wasn't important. <laughs> no. Dredge, Dredge, what are you up to? That's a, that's a fine question. Um, I hmm. I need a weapon. I guess I could grab a gun. Uh, can I chuck my knife at it? Hell yeah, you can throw your knife at it. I'm uh, gonna do that. Do you, are do you have the load to declare throwing knives? I do. I think I do. I'm, I, I'm not saying you can't throw the knife you currently have, but that'll be a difference in effect, of course. Okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll grab some, some throwing knives. Um, I have an air gun? How long does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> What's an air gun? <laughs> it shoots starts uh, using compressed air. It, it, they can be filled with drugs, chemicals, or biological agents. That's cool. That has been there literally since Beam Saber's creation. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely read this character sheet before. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna grab the air gun and <laughs> with, uh, with some acid God. and just shoot that. I think. Don't you just secrete it though? I do. No, I don't secrete acid. Uh, what do I do? I, um, where is it? Custom implant. Yeah, I just vibrate until it dies. It's mostly what happens. Um, so <laughs> I just like hug it and then, uh-huh. <laughs> God. Oh, here's, here's the thing. I don't think that I can run through gunfire to go and hug this thing to death. So I'm just gonna <laughs> shoot some acid at it. Okay, so here here's the thing about the air gun, the darts, and the syringes. Okay. Is that those drugs, chemicals, or biological agents would be something from your bandolier. So you can fire an empty dart at it, but frankly that's probably going to be no effect against like this drone or yeah. most... Like, I think that would actually probably be no effect against even a person. <laughs> it might have, like, limited effect against, like, a child if you're a monster. But, um, yeah, so okay, you're going to have to declare Bandolier. The, the pro to, to this, instead of using throwing knives, is that Bandolier has three uses. And also, um, I can put different stuff in these things. So that's my argument. That's my logic and I'm gonna shoot at it. Which one is the shoot one? <laughs> Jesus. 
Uh, which skill is for shooting? Yeah. You're be- uh, probably reasonably struggle or hunt. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, you could roll wreck. I would probably give you reduced effect for that. Uh, well, it's better than taking the lower, so I think I'm going to take reduced effect with wreck. Okay, this will be risky limited. Okay. So you're trying to inject this drone with acid. One entire die. That's a four. That's a four. All right. So yeah, you, you hit the last drone and the the dart in does its job injecting acid beneath the surface of the drone's exterior you manage to find one of its flexible weak points and after a couple of seconds the drone begins to smoke then it crashes to the ground sparking but not before it unleashes some small arms fire on you, Dredge. And you are going to take the level one harm grazed. Level one, because it is currently suppressed. And actually, that probably should have been controlled because it was suppressed. Okay. Yeah, you, you you slightly catch a bullet. Just a little bit. Just, just, a, just a little bit of a bullet. Yeah, just a little bullet. It's just a, from, <laughs> from a submachine gun. They're usually pretty... All right. Uh, <laughs> like a baby bullet. Yeah, like just from like a pistol round. Those, those barely hurt any people. Um, <laughs> just like a little squishy bullet. Rubber bullets don't hurt people, do they? Oh my god. Okay, we have to stop this. Alright, I'm going to add a tick to the support systems clock for another booby trap that y'all have disarmed with your faces, so to speak. (laughs) No, that's just how we do things. It's Uh, us. How we roll. (laughs) Okay. That's what faces are for. Mm. Nope. No, it's no, not. It's not. It's super not, buddy. Ray, I worry for you. <laughs> now, what are y'all going to do? You have secured the docking bay of this level. Your brief... It... Oh, go ahead. I, I just wanted to ask, is it really just... Is it really just people shaped all the way down? Uh, well, from what you can see, the... Excuse me, the corridor that is ahead because you haven't really explored this level for obvious booby trap related reasons Uh, the corridor you can see uh, is people sized there's again like the level above appears to be one that goes around the outside of this level and one that goes through the middle straight ahead of you but the one straight ahead doesn't go through to the other side. It stops at a uh, double uh, double door. Does the magpie? Did you declare a spotlight for the magpie? No. Okay. I don't think so. Yeah, the. Uh, I've got flare lights. Yeah, the lights are off down here. I've got, um, oh, that's on my Alvi. Yep. They can't... I've got light. Okay. I've got night, I can mark off night vision goggles. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't want to mark something I'd off. say don't, this... oh, hold up, let me check my character sheet real fast. Yeah. Flashlights, flares, or glow sticks. Yeah. So there, there was lighting in the docking bay, but the hallways are... Not illuminated. That claymore you spotted earlier was thanks to the light coming in from the open doors caused by the magpie propping them open as it attempted to squeeze deeper into the facility. Goody. 
Hey, uh, I'm just gonna say, hey, I have Roadmaster, so if we wanted this to be amenable to Max, it could be. Absolutely. Is that something we're interested in? I am... Hmm. Structural damage? Yeah, I was going to say, Fair. to be clear, that would necessitate, like, opening up walls. You're not going to, like... Renovation. <laughs> you're not going to collapse anything, but you're definitely going to change the interior shape of this facility. That's fair. It's That's fair. Look, not only do we put it in your place, we, we put in a rec room, okay? Uh, w R E C K, not R E C. <laughs> <laughs> But I'll, I'll just, I'll just, you know what? I'll, I'll hang on to that in case it gets really bad, and it probably will. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cut. <laughs> what? Oh cat? my goodness! <laughs> so yelling, cat screaming. <laughs> okay. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, I have two questions. One of which I can answer for myself. Hmm. You got two die and scan. Because I'm wondering... Because you'd have to maneuver. I, I don't think it's worth bringing... The, I don't think it's worth bringing the... Um, the magpie in. Just because like, you'd have to maneuver a well, lot. N okay, so to be clear. The magpie and the mantis both succeeded on their maneuver checks. And they, they took those consequences that they got for their partial successes. So they can move freely throughout these people sized hallways until you encounter like something that would change the nature of their relationship with the environment i'm not going okay. to have you make a maneuver roll every you know 30 feet or whatever then i have two questions for sasha um mm -hmm. one um does the magpie have room for shotgun and two does it open from the front Uh, let's see. I have cargo space. I do not have passenger space, but technically, technically, you can fit two people in it. Uh, I, technically, I have plenty of room for passengers, but, um... I have an environmental suit. <laughs> it has been established that the cargo space is not conducive to human life. So, That's true. But I believe that most, if not all of you, have already declared an environmental suit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I can I can take folks. Um, also, I can I can do a quick scan for what's in the next room if that interests. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, what I think would fire. probably be best for this is like we only have a limited source of light. What I would suggest is scanning for power conduits to try and locate where the lights are controlled from. Sure. Uh, happy to do so. Um, what is that? What's the, hmm. what, what are the odds on this one? This uh, will again be risky standard. All right. Risky and standard and two dice. Right? That's my scan. Yes. The cat sounds so sad. That is a natural six. Yay! Very good. Woo! All right. Yeah, you're able to find an electrical panel. Uh, I believe it is a terminal for interacting with the a headquarters AI. The, uh, what was that acronym again? Um, the, the PAL AI. Fantastic. Uh, I don't. An old friend at this point. Yes, yes, you you know them well, and unfortunately, they they do not like you at this time. As a reminder, because your ID was revoked. In fact, I think that was the consequence you got for acquiring the the data cache. Was that uh, your IDs were broken mm -hmm. because the partitioned the the part. Part pal was able to figure out that you did not belong here. 
Well, the lights are on. <laughs> yes, they are. Um. I do a little ta-da gesture. <laughs> So you've got this whole level to explore, and there is the door in front of you. In fact, now that the lights are up, you can see that the door in front of you is a security door with the sign that says Main Server Access. Oh, handy. I'd like to go in there. With the magpie, or...? Yeah, I'll take the magpie in there. Okay. With us inside the magpie, or...? Oh, no, I... Well, if you guys want to be in the magpie, I don't want to be in the magpie. I was asking those questions for the logistics of the thing. Oh. I was assuming we wanted to be in the magpie. I think this is something we should establish right now. Who is on Not foot, who is in a mech, and who is in a forklift? Forklift. On foot. Um, on foot, I established that with the kicking the grenade. All right. And Dredge is in the magpie. In the magpie, yes. Okay, so two of you are on foot, two of you are in vehicles of varying quality. Who knows, maybe this forklift will become a hero and <laughs> Bert will be replaced. <laughs> 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 so what you do is you just take out the cockpit from Bert and you insert the forklift with <laughs> that retro charm. <laughs> Takum is thinking about it. <laughs> Might be a good idea, she thinks. <laughs> okay. On, it makes it more like the power <coughs> lifter. <coughs> Alright. So Dredge, you you go to open this door. And you are denied access. What? Yep. What? And, and a hollow projector appears above the door and displays your friendly pal AI who says, I'm sorry, but you don't have access to this room, buddy. Did we actually get clearance when we were in, in downtime? Yeah. I don't remember. I feel we like did. We, we got did. new documents. <laughs> You lost your documents, and then you got documents again. I didn't yeah. get new documents. Here are these new documents. I think you will find that <laughs> I am <laughs> authorized to be here. <laughs> I what? love the love when we do this track. I what? love it. What do you want to roll for this? <laughs> I can't help you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's that's a that's a sway. Yeah. Uh, you want an assist on this? I would love an assist on this. Okay, because I think um, what Scarecrow can do for this um, is, since this is clearly military research, uh, this entire place, um, she has some knowledge, not necessarily of the specific protocols for this place, but the kind of protocols that would be in this kind of facility. So she could... Um, I think what basically she'd tell you what the document should say or like what kind of clearance or specific things you should be looking for with those sure yeah i i i know which which of these forms to flip to 100 percent um okay so that's one stress for me and that's gonna be improved effect i think uh this will be risky risky standard because you already have improved documents great it would normally be risky limited because <laughs> they know you <laughs> they're an ai not an a stupid oh uh, not, not, not an as not an ass is what you said correct <laughs> that's a sway Aww. with uh, risky standard you said a risky standard yeah unless you did you say you took increased effect or an extra die uh i took increased effect i think then that'll be great okay uh i'm gonna i'm gonna choose an extra die instead <laughs> fair That's, please 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 That's a four that'll do it you know it was a, a two four. Oh, i helped i helped you helped 
Okay. So, the door, uh, hmm. Pal AI says, oh, I see you have your ID updated, friend. I'm glad <laughs> to welcome you to the main server access. Have a nice day. And it winks out as the door opens up. And but as it's like it like flickers before it winks out, and for a split second, y'all think you can see Claire. Yep. Mm, that bitch. Don't like that. Don't like that. So the door opens up into the server room, and the lights come on within as you look through the doorway. It is just a row upon row of massive server banks. These black monoliths, large matte rectangles standing a couple about, about four feet apart, all of them facing you, almost like a, like a, like a cemetery's rows of tombstones. In matte so, black. Like opening sequence of Tron Legacy. Uh, I don't recall that movie well enough. Ah, it's a good movie. Um, but yeah, no, I, I get the picture. Um, just for fluff's sake, I think Scarecrow's going to clear the sweep the room for Claymores. Okay, yeah, you probably find one right inside the doorway and you're able to remove it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but this... As you look around, you realize this room is massive. Just absolutely huge. Is, is there space above the, the servers? Yeah, I think that there's, again, the magpie will be squeezing, mm -hmm. so it's not gonna have the best maneuverability, but you can indeed be above the server banks, just barely. Oh, I'm going to do that. Okay. <laughs> Just the, this flexible white thing squeezed in above the matte black tombstones filling the room. You get the light dis display across the from the Nell, yeah? yeah? Yeah. And the odd arm poking down from above. <laughs> so I'm seeing he's the magpie over a graveyard. Fitting imagery. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, how many exits to the room? <clears throat> hmm. I don't know if you can... If that is going to require a gather information roll, because this room... Sight lines are broken up in this room. Although the rows are fairly tidy, they're is something about the way this place is laid out that breaks it up so you can't just see from one end of the room to the other. This is screaming set piece. Uh, Pitchfork, are you going to be bringing your forklift in here? There is room for it. Much like the magpie, it's going to be restricted in its maneuverability. Seems like it would be actually pretty useful here, honestly. Also repeated. What? You just remuted yourself. It wasn't letting me hit the mute button. <laughs> 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 or, or the unmute, I guess. Um, yeah. I'm going to drive it in and be very tempted to play dominoes with the servers. <laughs> Good. Okay. So, hey, Dredge, do you want to dig around in these? Do I want to what now? Do we want to dig around in these? You know, servers, stuff. These yeah. Kind of stuff. Pro that's probably a, a good idea. Is there a console I can access here? You want to borrow it, my this? find security cracker? Do you want to just do that? Since you're better at that than I am. Yeah, yeah, that too. Um, okay. I'm not actually, I'm not good at hacking. I'm also, oh, I guess I have, I just have the 
Mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe I will do that then. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll hand over my security cracker. To... So your yeah. your security cracker isn't going to help with hacking, unfortunately. Okay, it's not a thing where it's like I'll. No, it'll handle like a key card lock or like a. a, a passcode thing where you gotta press buttons or like a retinal scanner or just a plain old mechanical lock but it's not gonna help you figure out like someone's password uh scarecrow did you want to do that gather information check to try and find the exits uh sure what's the role for that or i have to do i have to pick a role for that well you you pick your role okay um And this will be a setup action, and if anyone takes advantage of it, they'll have improved position or effect as appropriate. Okay, I think it's going to be Prowl, because what I want to do is move above the server so I have better sight lines. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I'll allow that. So this will be a uh, risky standard. Okay, uh, I'll just roll two dice. Oof, two. Two. All right. So, you climb up on top of... On top of one of these uh, server monoliths. And you're looking around for the exit. And you don't spot one yet. As, because this room is so big and the monoliths do weird things to the to your sight lines, as I said. And then the monolith you are on top of rapidly rises and slams into the ceiling. So, take the level 2 harm broken. I would like to resist that. Okay. Um, I'm going to say prowess because I want to dive off of it. Oh, uh, that's absolutely prowess. Okay, so that's 2d6. To oh! Yikes, that's a 2. And that stressed me out. Really? You only had 4 left? Yep. Oh, boy. Okay. Oof. Um, hmm. How can we get you out of the scene for a little while? I can dis I can disappear among the servers. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so I think I think what it does is it like suddenly slams you against the roof, and you like black out for a second, and then y'all realize that all of these servers are on platforms that allow. Uh, someone to rearrange this room at will. And this thing, this, <laughs> the, the server that uh, Scarecrow is passed out on just like tips back a little bit and then flings forward and tosses her somewhere in amongst the forest of server banks lost oh, to no. all of your vision. Oh no! Oh, this gives you a lot of dramatic opportunities. So... Enter the motherfucking arena. <laughs> Jess, let me know when you think it's been suitably long for a Scarecrow to return. And don't forget to mark... Oh, wait, no, you, you uh, resisted that stress. Okay. So, what do you, what the three of you do? I need I need to access this computer. I we we need to hmm. um hmm. I want to be useful here, but there's literally no way to help. Can can you like can you scout around and try to find where the person who's controlling this is? Yeah. Okay. Also, as a reminder. Although, Tower, you don't have any connection with Dredge, so you can't just assist, 
you can still do setup actions, which okay. requires you to do an action roll, and then anyone who takes advantage of those will get improved position or effect as appropriate. Yeah, so I think I do want to um, find and, like, sort of scout around the room, scout around the server room, um, and just sort of, like, see if there is anyone else in here, and if not, like, maybe tap into some of the terminals, see if there's anything controlling this. Okay, I think that this will be a gather information roll using Prowl. Well, I'm guessing you're going to want to use Prowl because that's your yeah. thing. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah, this will be risky standard. Okay. Four dice. That's a six. Excellent. Nice. Okay. So, you slide about this s server farm, looking for any sign of people. You find the odd booby trap and are able to take it apart to no ill effect. But after a while, you realize that no one else is here. If she, like... Shadespear came, did their work, and then left. But what you do realize is that them finishing their work meant installing, at the very least, an instance of Claire overwriting PAL AI. Fun. So, Claire is watching the four of you in wander about the forest of her brain so to speak yeah i don't communicate that via throat mic i wait until i'm back uh to them and like say it to them directly quietly and out of view out of any visible cameras or microphones <laughs> worried about it reading lips yeah you know you never know yeah gotta watch out for ais when monoliths are around Okay. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pal? Yeah, okay. So... Yep. All right. With that, it is time for our break of the week. And we will be back shortly in just a couple minutes. <laughs> 